Minecraft 1.20 has introduced the pottery system, with 20 new pottery shards, 3 types of pots, and tons of interesting uses. Learn all about it in this Minecraft pottery guide. So to get any type of pottery in Minecraft, we need to first get bricks. Now there's multiple ways. Now there are two ways of getting bricks in Minecraft, and I will show you both of them. The first way is to find clay. Clay can be found in two main places. The first one is in riverbeds. As you can see, whenever we break any of these clay blocks, they turn into four clay balls. The second place to get clay from is the lush caves. Lush caves are absolutely full of clay, and so because of that, with a really efficient shovel, you can get yourself your entire inventory filled up with clay balls in only a couple minutes. In fact, it's so easy to get clay here that it really has changed the entire rarity of the item, so if you do want to get yourself an insane amount of this item, be sure to come to the lush caves. Now once you do get the clay balls, smelt them in the furnace, and each clay ball will turn into one brick. The problem with this method is it does take a lot of time to smelt all these clay balls into clay bricks, and as well as that it takes a huge amount of fuel. Because of course most things made out of bricks take multiple bricks, you're using a ton of fuel to get yourself not very many items. So there's a much more efficient way of getting tons of bricks, and it uses villagers. The second way of getting them is way more efficient and way easier if you have a good source of emeralds, and that's because every single mason for only one emerald will sell you 10 bricks. Incidentally, they'll also buy clay, but of course the main point of this is the fact that we can get ourselves an absolutely massive amount of bricks incredibly easily. And so if you're actually wanting to do a ton of pottery in Minecraft, it's generally a better idea just to have a bunch of masons that you buy bricks from than it is to harvest clay and smelt it. But of course it's up to you what method you use. Now once you actually have a good source of bricks, we can start making pot. Pots. Now there is currently no workstation in Minecraft for pottery, however we can use the crafting table to do the same thing. We're going to start with the type of pottery that's been in the game for a long time, and that is the flower pot. Three bricks in the crafting grid in a V shape will give you one flower pot. Thankfully they do stack to 64, and we place them down, you can see the appearance is a very small clay pot that has a little bit of dirt in it. Interestingly enough, there didn't used to be a bottom texture on this block, but that was fixed quite a while ago. Now these blocks do have a hitbox to them, so you can actually use these very thin blocks to jump across. The use of the flower pot is to show off different plants that you've collected. Now obviously not every type of plant can be in the flower pot, for instance tall ferns can't, random leaves can't, and you can't just put grass in a flower pot, but most types of foliage in the nether and the overworld can be put in pots. So for example we can put saplings in pots, you can also put the new torch flower in pots, as well as just standard flowers that you find around the overworld. Certain blocks too, like let's say cactus and bamboo, have very special and beautiful models in the flower pots, unlike let's say standard flowers where they're going to look pretty similar just planted anywhere as they are inside of a flower pot. With things like the cactus, we have a really beautiful model with it, and same with the bamboo. So this is a very fun decorative item that has been in the game for a long time, and that used to be the only type of pottery in the game, but Minecraft 1.20 has added a brand new type. Now how is this type of pottery crafted? It is crafted exactly exactly the same as the other type, except for there's one more type of brick. So instead of three bricks, we have four bricks turning into one pot. There is one major difference here though, these pots are not stackable. As you can see here, our entire inventory is completely filled up with pots, which is not ideal to say the least. We can even craft them like this, pressing Q over here, to have all these unstackable items on the ground. Now what is this item? It is known as the decorated pot, but it's technically two items in one, because there is the plain decorated pot, and there is the pot that actually does have decorations on it. Let's start by talking about the standard decorated pot. They're almost completely square, but there's one pixel in every edge that's smaller. On the top, we of course have the mouth of the jar. Now something important to know about this is the mouth of the jar here does not have a hitbox to it, so you can jump over these, unlike let's say fences. As well as that, you can place them on top of each other to make very cool pillar-like looking structures. Knowing how most Minecraft players generally use new items, I'm assuming that the decorated pot is probably going to be used more for pillars than it is for actually pottery, as it actually works really well as a pillar. There is another important thing to know about this item though, and that's the fact that it is instantly broken. That's right, you can instantly break these pots, which makes it very very useful if you're building that you can get rid of them so quickly. Of course it's the same
same actually with flower pots as well, but players do not generally go through breaking those. Now there's a really interesting thing about these though. You'll notice when we break them, they do drop themselves. This is not an item that just breaks. However, the strange thing about that is it depends on what you break it with. Well, obviously, if you break a pot with a silk touch tool, it'll just drop a pot. However, if you'd break a pot with any tool that is not silk touch, it'll actually drop bricks. As you notice here, it is four bricks, the exact number of bricks that we use to craft those with. So for example, this could be a hoe or a sword or a pickaxe. Now, not literally every single tool works, but it's most. And you can see it instant breaks these as well. So we can actually convert all these pots we have right back into bricks instantly. I'm assuming in reality, these are sort of like pottery shards on the ground that we're picking up again. But still, it is nice that we can do this. It's kind of a strange functionality that we can break it two different ways. But still very, very useful if you're trying to get all the bricks back that you crafted your pots with. Now, pots are water loggable. If we take water, we cannot directly place it on the side of the pot. However, if water is already in an area and then we place a decorated pot there, it will definitely be able to be waterlogged still. Or of course, if we place them underwater, that also works. Being able to be waterlogged that way as well. But for now, you're not able to pick up the water where that pot is, but I'm assuming both these things will be fixed soon. Also, although for now you cannot make bubble columns inside of waterlogged pots, one thing very fun you can do is if you have a pot that is waterlogged and then you have other pots on the side of it, we can basically go swimming up and down this incredibly small space, which gives us the ability to more or less float and fly inside of survival mode. So that's definitely very fun functionality that you can do with pots, just simply making yourself an area where it's water sources all the way down, then filling it up with pots there, having complete control to go up and down here, a very, very handy elevator. Now, obviously, if this is all you could do with pots in Minecraft, it would honestly be kind of boring, because of course they're fairly plain, and although they can be used for a lot of decorations, which we'll get into soon, it's still not that decorative of an item, and that's where the exciting pottery shards come in. So how do pottery shards work? Well, there are 20 types of pottery shards in Minecraft 1.20, and they're all found in different archaeological sites. All these items are non-renewable, so they're actually quite valuable, and some of them are incredibly difficult to find. This is what they look like in shard form, and you can see all the different patterns here. I'll break down how to get each one individually in a minute here. And if you take a look right here, we can see what they look like on the pots. You can see there's all kinds of different patterns, like a broken heart, a wolf, a pickaxe, the warden, a chest, a potion, a sword, a player with their arms up, a bow and arrow, a fishing rod, a fire, a creeper, a map, a villager, a heart, a diamond, what's probably a campfire, an acacia tree, a skeleton skull, and a sniffer. Now, how do you actually place these on pots? Well, when making the standard decorated pot, you just put four bricks in the crafting grid like this, and that will give you the plain decorated pot, which is sort of a misnomer. When we're trying to make this with the pottery shards, you'll make the standard decorated pot as normal, but you replace some of these bricks with shards. And you can replace one brick with a shard, or you can replace all the bricks with shards. That's right, you can make one of these pots with no bricks needed. You'll actually notice on the side of here, we can see sort of a preview of what's on two of the sides. The sides they show are the one on the left and the bottom. Or we could do any combination of this we want with, let's say, two of the shards in here, or even just one shard. It's really whatever you want. But this does give us an insane amount of different variations that we can do with this. For instance, this pot here has the creeper on this side and the skeleton on the other. This pot here has, of course, the patterns on every side. This one here has just the sword on it. This one here has the chest, and this one has the villager. Or you can put multiple of the same shard on the pot. Now, one thing that's really nice, because these pottery shards are such incredibly rare and hard to get items, is you never really lose them in a sense. And I'll show you what I mean. If we break a pot with any tool that doesn't have silk touch on it, like I said earlier, we'll just get those bricks back. But if we break a decorated pot, we'll get all the shards back. That's right, that means these shards can be reused over and over again and are never destroyed when we craft this pot. So for instance, here we'll get two bricks, the skeleton and the creeper pattern back, and that is exactly what we got. Here we'll get three bricks and the sword, here we'll get three bricks in the chest, and here we'll get three bricks and the villager. And again, that's also what happened there. And so with this ability to reuse these shards over and over again, you can combine these in whatever patterns you want, and this really goes a lot into the storytelling aspect of Minecraft 1.20, giving the players even more ways of utilizing the items in the game to tell stories. And one other difference you'll notice on here too, there's sort of this yellowish brown line that's on either side of the pattern, which definitely is a really pretty indentation on there, and you do not get that on any of the other sides of the pot, or none at all on the non-decorated pot. But anyway, how do we actually find all these different pottery shards? 
So let's practice some archaeology. We're going to have to start by making ourselves a brush with a feather, a copper ringgit, and a stick. Now to get yourself the Arms Up Pottery Shard, as well as the Brewer Pottery Shard, which has the potion on it, these are only found at the Desert Well. Now how common is this at the Desert Well? Well, 25% of suspicious sand at the Desert Well will give you the Arms Up, and 25% of the suspicious sand at the Desert Well will give you the Brewer Pattern. The only problem is, is that it's actually very common for there only to be two suspicious sand at the desert well, so only half of desert wells even have one of these pottery shards. But either way, that is the only way of getting the Arms Up pottery shard or the Brewer pottery shard. If we head over to the desert temple, go around on the floor here to find some sand, and dig down through here looking for suspicious sand and then dig it out, there are chances to find four different pottery shards here. That is the archer or bow-shaped pottery shard, the prize or diamond pottery shard, the skull pottery shard, and the miner or pickaxe shard. Now what are the chance of actually finding these from the suspicious sand in the desert temple? Well it is 12.5% of suspicious sand here, which is a fairly large amount, that's about 1 in 8, or that means because there's four different pottery shards here, 50% of what you dig up from suspicious sand in the desert temple is going to be one of these four pottery shards, which means that it's pretty easy to get yourself a ton of these pottery shards from the structure. And as you can see here already, after just digging up a little bit of the suspicious sand, we've already gotten three different pottery shards. It's crazy to think, but seven out of the 20 pottery shards are found at one structure, and that is the Trail Ruins. Now if you want to know more about the Trail Ruins and archaeology in general, I do have an archaeology guide, so be sure to check that out for more information on this. But either way, we can take a look at the seven pottery shards found here. They are the Burn Pottery Shard, or the Fire, the Danger or creeper pottery shard, the friend, which is the villager pattern pottery shard, the heart pottery shard, as well as the heart break pottery shard, then the sheaf pottery shard, which earlier I said might have been a campfire, it's actually a sheaf of wheat, or of course food, and finally the wolf or howl pottery shard. Now what's the chance of finding these in the suspicious gravel, as well as suspicious sand that is found very frequently in incredibly large numbers all across this structure? It's actually a very small percentage. It's only one point or a little bit under 2%, and obviously it's kind of discouraging how uncommon they are. This does still mean that a pretty good amount of suspicious sand and gravel you find here is going to have pottery shards in it. And the thing is, because there's so much suspicious sand as well as gravel at this structure, you can find yourself a lot of these pretty quickly still. For instance, right here we've already found two pottery shards after only digging around for a minute. And these structures are absolutely amazing to dig through and find treasures at. And of course, some of the best treasures you find here are those pottery shards because they're so rare and hard to find. But sometimes you will just dig up a dead bush. But on to the next group of pottery shards. Three types of pottery shards are found at the warm ocean ruins. So when you're brushing up the suspicious sand here, what's the chance for finding these? Well, the chance is 7.1% of suspicious sand will give you... Well, the chance is that 7.1% of suspicious sand will give you these. That does not mean 7.1% for all of these. That means it's individually each of these, so the total chance is actually about 21% to get any one of these pottery shards. The chance is actually about 21% to get a pottery shard in general, but of course to get one of those specific ones it's 7.1% chance. Now what are these actual pottery shards showing that we're finding here? Well, the one that looks like an acacia tree is found here, known as Shelter. The Angler Pottery Shard that has the fishing rod on it is found here, as well as the Snort Pottery Shard which has the sniffer on it. And this of course is a reference to the fact that sniffer eggs are also found exclusively at the warm ocean ruins Suspicious Sand. So be sure to get yourself a water breathing potion and some night vision, and start brushing up Suspicious Sand around the structure to get yourself these amazing pottery shards. But anyway, on to the final structure that has pottery shards at it, and that is the opposite of the warm ocean ruins. It's actually the cold ocean ruins. And the cold ocean ruins have suspicious gravel at them, and you can find the blade pottery shard that has the sword on it, the explorer pottery shard that has the map on it, 
the Mourner pottery shard that has the Warden on it, and the Plenty pottery shard that has the chest on it here. The chance to find them is 6.7% chance, with an over 25% chance of finding a pottery shard in general when brushing up the suspicious gravel of the Cold Ocean Ruin. And I actually love the fact of these pottery shards that you find at the Cold Ocean Ruin, because they're such mysterious types. Having the Warden pottery shard, the Map pottery shard, the sword, as well as the chest, these really do paint a much more mysterious picture of the cold ocean ruin. But anyway, that's how you get all the pottery shards. But anyway, that's how you get all the pottery shards in Minecraft. Let's finish up with some really cool things you can do with pots. So the first thing that I did mention earlier but is really really cool is to use the decorated pots as columns. It doesn't always work, but it can look really awesome in certain types of builds. And because of this, you can use these as a really interesting way to add structure and support to your different builds. And this makes this item very useful for lots of different applications. Another really good trick you can do this is make a new type of pot by combining the flower pot and the decorated pot. How do you do this? Well, place down the decorated pot and simply place a flower pot on top of it. It'll slightly change the texture and you'll notice here we have a double pot. This is not really a specific feature in the game, but is rather the fact that you can put really anything on top of pots that you want. It still works as a flower pot though, so we could take these corn flowers and put them inside of here, and basically make a giant pot by combining the flower pot and the standard pot. This is a really cool build trick, and I think honestly gives us way more uses for these items. However, another thing that's important to know is that the top part of the decorated pot doesn't have a hitbox, so because of that we can actually use trapdoors or other items to see it poking through. Just like you can see here, it also works on campfires. I'm not exactly sure what this could be used for, but there's a bunch of different applications. Or maybe it could look like there's a drain in the ground, or a knot in wood, or any other feature where this texture is useful. You could use this trick of having a trapdoor or some other block on top of the decorated pot. And of course, the fact of blocks being able to be put on top of the decorated pot can be taken in another direction as well, to make it look like we're using these decorated pots for some sort of chemistry. So for example, we could have a bamboo fence going going into a decorated pot like this, you can see we can place them right on there, and it really does look like it's a pillar coming out of there. So that could look like tubing or pipes, or you could even use this as a support, where we have fences coming out of these decorated pots. Let's say just like this, we have these fences coming out of the decorated pots, and this is an absolutely beautiful way of using these for decorations. Anyway, that's about everything about pottery in Minecraft. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next next one. Goodbye!